In Premiere Pro you can manually blur the face of a moving person, but you can also blur a logo on some clothing or in the background if it needs to speed up from shot, but you can also use motion tracking to speed up the process and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Hi guys and welcome back to Editor's Life and today we're going to have a play about with a couple of clips and experiment with motion track masks inside Premiere. I've purposely picked these two clips because they throw a few challenges at us while we're trying to do these motion track masks. So we'll start with the first one of these people walking. The first thing you want to do if you want to blur someone's face is go to your effects panel. So mine's up here, go to effects and then search Gaussian Blur. And then just drag that onto your clip. Then you want to create a mask, so you want to click on this little circle icon here and then holding shift, just scale it down until it fits the person's face and then just move it in front. At this point you want to zoom in and then start adjusting your blur amount. So I'm just going to go to 200% and then we're going to increase the blur amount and then mess with the feather on the path a little bit just to soften it. Maybe a bit with the mask expansion too and then we'll see how that looks. And it looks a little bit big at the moment so I'm just going to scale that down and then realign and that's starting to look a lot better. At this point what we could do is we could go to the mask path, click the stopwatch at the beginning, go to the end of the clip and then make sure it's still aligned. And while that might work in some cases, quite often it's going to be inaccurate and you'll find there are points in the middle like here where the mask totally slips off where it's meant to be. Instead what you want to do is go back to the beginning and then press this little play icon and the software will begin motion tracking or pinning the mask to where it needs to be. Once that's complete, you can start scrubbing through your footage and seeing just how good a job the motion track did. So if we start scrolling through here, it's done a pretty good job so far, but as our arm crosses in front of the mask at this point, it's just thrown the track off a little bit and we're starting to see half of this person's face, which is not ideal if you're trying to conceal someone's identity. When this happens, what you need to do is find the point where it does happen. So it's right around here for us and you want to zoom in on your keyframes and then delete anything after this point. So we'll just come in and delete all of these and you want to go past this point. So we'll just come to about there, realign the mask and then start the motion track again from this point. So just press play and let it do its work. And we'll now see what that looks like. So we'll just scroll through again. And the track towards the end looks a lot better. What you might need to do is during this point, you might need to just zoom in a little bit and create a point in the middle where the mask should be. So we'll manually just move this and then move it again. And then everything else looks fine from this clip. In clip two, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time with a logo on the t-shirt instead. So you want to go to your Gaussian Blur again and drag that on, quickly create a mask, bring it down to where it needs to be using Shift again on your keyboard. Might go a touch bigger on this. And then we'll adjust the blur levels and then we'll run the track again and see what this does. One thing to remember about Premiere Pro is that it does a really good job at motion tracking when it can constantly see the thing it's tracking but in the last clip, as soon as the arm swiped across the face, it lost its way a little bit. And in this clip, what you'll notice is, as the logo goes off screen, the mask follows, but as it comes back into frame, it just doesn't know where it is or what to track. So that part of it would be totally useless. Again, similar to last time, what we have to do is, as soon as the logo goes off screen, so right around here, you want to delete everything from that point onwards. So I'll just come into the keyframes here and delete them. And at this point, what we'll do is we'll manually add in this last keyframe just to get the blurred part of the mask off screen. We'll go forward again to when it comes back on, which is right around here. And what we're gonna do for this little bit is we're gonna track it backwards. So bring your mask back down and we'll just track it backwards for a second or two. You don't have to let it finish. And that should give us enough keyframes for the reverse track. So I'll just zoom into the keyframes. And you'll notice if I go backwards, it's actually tracked it really well as it's coming back in. But at this point, we need to totally remove the mask again. So pull it off screen and then we'll run the track right up until the end of the clip. And we'll just have a final look at this shot. The 
The great thing about this technique is it does most of the work for you. It's pretty accurate until something obscures the mask or the thing you're trying to motion track goes off screen. But it's pretty straightforward to just delete those keyframes and retract the parts that you need to. I have picked these shots on purpose because they do throw up these problems that you might also experience when tracking yourself. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on the video. And for those of you that are subscribed to the channel, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.